In this video, we are going to talk about something called the rainbow table. Now, let me explain to you what is the rainbow table and how effective this technique is when it comes to cracking a password. So, I'm going to open my victim machine, uh, my hacker machine, and let me even log in here to my backtrack machine. Now, we explained in previous video the technique of cracking a password. And we went through different ways. So if you remember, we had the dictionary attack that used a dictionary file. We have the brute force attack that use a brute force file, which is trying letter by letter and number by number until he is able to get the password and we explained that the problem with the brute force attack that if your password is complex it will take long long time so most of the organization now has a policy that when you create a password to your account even the email it will enforce you to create a, a complex password so, the brute force attack as a complex password was just to prevent the brute force attack. Now, let's open an application and just to remind you how the brute force attack was working. So, if we go to, uh, I think this is the one, no. So, yeah, Brutus, if you remember this program, and we can specify like uh, uh, a computer, another computer, or a website, and which port is looking for, and I can choose from here a word list, and this is if it's a dictionary attack, or I can ask him to keep trying, which is a brute force attack, and I can tell him to try and we can specify the range so i can tell him I'm, I'm assuming that the password is between seven and ten character for instance and it may include capital and small and lowercase and uppercase so he can try everything i can ask him to keep trying and you're going to notice that it will take endless time so range so uh, lower upper mixed alpha and click on ok and start so it will take long long time actually and if you are using a complex password uh, this will maybe take years okay now let's analyze that why it's taking long time the point is, the password as are usually saved as encrypted. So let's take the Windows password, for instance. You know that Microsoft Windows has a file that holds all the password. So when you log in and you type the right password, you'll, you'll be allowed to log in. If not, you'll not be allowed. So the passwords are saved here, the local password. Where exactly the local password in Microsoft Windows are saved? They are saved on the C drive. So if you open computer and go to the C drive and go to the Windows folder and in Windows there is System32 Windows and then System32 and then there is a folder called config and in config folder you're going to find a file called SAM and SAM this is a file this is the file that holds all the password and those passwords are encrypted so to be able to crack one of those you need to keep using a password or keep checking different passwords but you need to encrypt them first and then test them let me show you the content of this file you cannot open this file by just double click on it you have to open it using a program and using a program you can take one of the uh, major programs that we keep using which is uh, can enable or is can enable can enable also can open the same file for you to show you the content okay 
So if I go here and I click on the plus sign, sorry, if I go to the uh, cracking, let me remove everything for you. So uh, remove all, click on OK, and I click on the plus sign here, and I click uh, include the uh, local hash, which is the same file, and next. He will get you whatever is inside. So you have the account here, except you have the password. But as you can see, passwords are encrypted. So are not the real password, but they are the encrypted one. So when you are trying a brute force, what exactly is that will happen? He will take, for instance, he will start with A letter. So he can encrypt the A letter with the same type of encryption, which is LM hash, and then verify if this is a valid password or not. If it's okay, fine. If it's not, he's gonna take A and B, and then he's gonna try to check this password and see if it's gonna work or not. And then he's gonna take A and B and C. So you will notice that a big amount of effort will be lost in the process of encrypting and de-encrypting the password. So this is what makes the uh, process taking long time, is that he keep encrypting and trying, encrypting, and this will take a lot of effort. Now, here is the question. What if, for instance, I will, uh, what can I say, uh, download a file that is already encrypted. So I can go online, and we're going to see a couple of websites right now. I know that Microsoft Windows, for instance, are using the type of encryption called LMH. So we can go to a website, tell them, okay, I need to have a file that is, uh, I need to have a file that is, uh, let's say, include all the character from, uh, all, all password from six to 10 character. That is in, including letter and number and special character that is encrypted with LM hash. So he will give you a file. This usually is a very, very big file. You know, it could be like 50 GB, 60 GB. He will give you a huge file that has all password, but they are already encrypted. And when you start using this file, it will just compare hash with hash. So it will be must more, uh, it will be must full faster. It will not take that much of time, maybe like two, three hours, and then you'll be able to get the password. The only problem here is to first to identify what kind of hash is used. So you need to first investigate, and this is actually well known. I mean, we know in Windows what hash is used, and we know in Linux what hash is used, and we know on like a web server what kind of hash is used. So it's not hard to understand that. Number two, and this is a big challenge actually, it's to download those hashes. So you need to spend like, you know, a couple of weeks preparing for different hash files because it, those are very, very big files. And then you can check the uh, uh, right file. So the problem is, is in Rainbow Table is that you're gonna need to download a huge amount of file first and as I was saying it may take a couple of weeks preparing that and by the way most of them are free and you need to have the correct type of hashing and if you do that then cracking password will be quite easy now let me show you from where you can download those rainbow table and then let me show you how they can be used so rainbow table can be downloaded from different place but I will suggest something like freerainbowtable.com. It's a website, so you can go here, Google, and uh, you can go to free or uh, oh yeah, free rainbowtable.com, and you can go to download. And you can choose, depend on the target that you are trying to cracking the password from. So you can see that, you know, the amount of password, uh, the, the amount of, uh, of hash file. By the way, some of them are free and some of them are uh, with fees. So you can go to download table. 
and let's see what we have they have about 974 actually 9074 uh, amount of RAM, rainbow table so uh, download table progress okay so you notice that different kind of hashes here with different amount of information so let's see the download part so you can go and download whatever you want and uh, as i told you some of them are free while some of them are, are with fees so uh, you can check but you should as i mentioned you should be aware of uh, what exactly you are looking for so this is the first step to download you're gonna need to dedicate a couple of hard drive each one is like 2 gb and later on you can uh, utilize them in a specific way but actually i'm going to show you that you don't even need to do that you can do that in an easier way so let's see the available table this is an explanation how it works okay so this is the concept of rainbow table now how to utilize them assume that i did open this sam file and i have the password here so i'm cracking the password i already have the file that includes the hash i can right click on any password and i can right click here and i can ask him to create to do a brute force attack on the lm hash or the channel attack so and you know that if we are using the lm hash we need to specify a word list so they already have a word list let's try to start and you can add even more you can right click here and add more to more word list and i believe on a previous video i show you from where you can get the uh, word list and uh, here you go the password I don't know if it has been correct or not let me see no it's not let me try again dictionary attack lm hash and let me remove that and put another one so we can remove all and we can add it come with its own word list but i think i i showed you some good word list that you can use and here you go and start he was able to get the password the password is one two three four five six so this is the password it didn't take time because it was a uh, simple password but what if it's a complex password now dictionary was, will not be able to discover it and if you check the brute force attack it will take a long time but you can take the rainbow table attack but you should have a rainbow table that you can point to and then he gonna go through the step and it will take much longer time so long rainbow table it's much more effective if you are trying to crack a complex password but as i told you it needs some preparation now you have two different ways if you don't need to go through a different website and spend days downloading file you can generate file yourself and can enable come with its own tool to generate file so let me close that and let me close it and let me open here the uh, can enable folder and can enable come with two program the can that we have been using before and there is something called WinGen and WinGen will allow you to create your own rainbow table so let's see how WinGen are working. So we're gonna open WinGen, and actually a lot of applications are doing that. So from Kane, WinGen, and in WinGen we can go and click on Add Table, and here you're gonna see the specification of the table. Now, what kind of hash should be inside? so it should be lm hash md5 md4 whatever so md5 for instance and the password should be between for instance 6 to uh, 
10. And as you can see, this will be a height combination, all the spaces. And then you can click on OK. But if you do that, actually, it will take long time as well until it generates the table, especially if it was like uh, from 6 to like 11 or 12 password or something like that. And it will take a lot of processing hours as well. So, but it's one of the options. So you can download the table or you can create the rainbow table. So let me just remind you that rainbow table is tables that include all password but encrypted. And when you use them, it in compare encryption with encryption. Now, have, we have a third option that I can consider the best option. Some of the website already have the rainbow table and you just can utilize them. Let me show you an example. If we take any program that encrypt, so for instance, we spoke about the hash calculator. Uh, actually, we're going to speak about this program. It's a program that allows you to encrypt the document or run and get the hash of the file. And this will be explained in the different subject, including the malware. So if I put here a text, I need to encrypt a text. For instance, I'm going to put my name. So, and click on calculate. It will give me the encryption. This is a free application that I'm going to share with you. And this is my encryption text. So this is an MD5. And even if you don't know with which encryption, you can take this text and go to can enable and add it. It will show you it's uh, encrypted as well. Now, assuming that I don't want to go through the process, I have the hash file, I have the password file, I compromise the system, I get the same file, except uh, the, the file is encrypted. So I have the password, but they are encrypted, so I cannot use them. So what I can do in this case, I can go to md5 online decryptor some of the website it depends about the hash you can check for lm hash online decryptor or md5 but md5 is the most common one and hash killer is one of the best you can try you know most of them are working but this one is very very good and you open this hash killer and you put here the hash paste and then you write down the code down here s u s e Q N and you click on submit and as you can see it has been encrypted so you are utilizing rainbow table that is ex that exists on different websites so cracking the password can be done in different way do not just think normal ways and as I told you, most of the organization reach a stage just to put a complex password and they think this is the best way for securing the password. But they didn't consider the rainbow table attack because rainbow table will bypass this complex issue. It needs some preparation, but it's quite easy. So you should verify if the organization are using a proper uh, policy related to the password. You should verify if the rainbow table attack is, is applicable or not and you should uh, recommend some policy related to uh, that so this is the idea of rainbow table and how to utilize them on the next video we're going to take some advanced technique and password but let me remind you on with something that when it comes to cracking password or getting or compromising a password Cracking is not the only way. I mean, in this section, we are talking about cracking the password. So by using brute forcing or rainbow table or whatever I think. But please consider that you also can sniffer, which you're going to see later on. You can social engineering. You can. So if you plan to get some password from someone, definitely you'll be able to do that. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them and I'll reply back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much.